Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac and welcome to another vacuum cleaner review and demonstration. Well, it's been at least two minutes since my last one, so I thought it was high time I gave you another review. While you may have seen me unbox this cheapo bagless goblin upright vacuum cleaner from Asda, well now it's time to put this machine through its paces. Is the very cheap price reflected in poor performance? Well, by the end of this video, we'll know all about it. Here it is, it's extremely lightweight, bagless of course, as most vacuum cleaners are nowadays, unfortunately. But anyway, most people want bagless, and this <laughs> is a bagless cleaner. The flex doesn't want to stay put, but anyway, as you can see, it's very, very light. Now you'll see very similar machines to this under the Argos Value brand. I've also seen an almost identical cleaner in Sainsbury's as their basic upright vacuum. You can get it as a Tesco basic cleaner, although the Tesco one, it's more or less the same, really from the bag downwards, but it does have a metal handle, the one I've seen on Tesco's um, online store. In the USA, you can get, again, very, very similar machine called the Black & Decker Air Swivel. But I think all the machines should perform more or less the same. They just vary slightly in the features and the tools. This only comes with one two-in-one crevice tool. I believe the Tesco one has a three-in-one tool. And even the Black & Decker one, I think you can get one with a turbo nozzle. So anyway, this is the basic Goblin bagless upright cleaner from Asda. So without any further ado, I'll take you on a quick tour of the machine and then I'll put down some pet hair. We'll see how good it is at removing pet hair first, then some general dirt, and then I'll see how effective it is on hard floors. And finally, we'll see how far the attached stretchable hose will reach up a standard flight of stairs. Before I tackle this very hairy rug with the Goblin Upright Cleaner, I'll just show you the machine in a bit more detail. Starting at the bottom of the machine, we've got the cleaning head that does all the work on your carpets. You can see it's clear, so you can see when it gets blocked up, if it does, or if there's a load of hairs wrapped round, you can see them visually, so you can clean them out. Underneath, you can see the brushes. I recline the machine. So it's just a regular set of fairly stiff, shortish brushes that are designed to clean the carpets. Not hard floors, I'll show you what you need for hard floors. In fact, while I'm in this vicinity, I'll show you the adapter that you need. This is for hard floor use only. Goblin don't recommend using the machine on hard floors with the brush in contact with your floor. You have to put on this little plate here just clips on to the bottom and then that's suitable for hard floor cleaning. Of course, later on in the demo, I'll be showing you how well this performs on hard floors. This Goblin Upright has two large rear wheels at the back of the machine and they're quite good actually. I'm quite impressed with these. They're quite wide and they also have a rubber tread on them which enables you to clean over hard floors without slipping and sliding all over the place. And they're not a hard plastic like so many budget cleaners. You do have this softer tire, which I think is a nice little feature to have on such a cheap vacuum. It's got air swivel technology. To recline the handle, you just pop your foot on the little symbol of a foot, just on the cleaning head, and then recline the machine to the operating position. And as you can see, it will swivel about quite easily. It's very light and easy to push, even easier when it's switched on. <laughs> and that will keep happening. While that's happened, I'll show you what is fitted to the flex in order for that not to happen. Whoops! <laughs> Stand upright, it's not going well so far. This little clip here is designed and it did work at first, it is designed to hold the flex together so it doesn't keep coming undone. But it seems to have lost, and I haven't used this machine properly yet, it seems to have lost its grip, unfortunately. That will fall off again. While I'm on the back of the machine, this is where the cord is stored. At the top, there's a hook. You turn that 
down to release all the cable in one go. You'll see that the cable exits from the bottom of the machine to prevent you tripping over that all the time. Right at the top here, move it that way, right at the top here, at the back of the handle, there's a little hook which is designed to take the mains cord. Just clip it into there so that keeps it out of harm's way. Well, as you can see, it's a bagless unit with quite a large clear bin. To remove the bin, there's a little red catch on the top and you've got a handle for the bin. That handle also forms the carry handle for the whole machine itself. Take it outside to the bin and release the catch at the bottom. Shake it and let the dirt fall out and then just close the bottom again. There is a filter on the top. You must keep them clean for maximum efficiency. There's another catch here and inside you'll find a dual layer filter. You've got a spongy filter here and then a fabric filter here. Both are washable. Rinse them under water, give them a good shake. Let them dry for 24 hours or so until you put them back in the cleaner. You've also got this cyclonic part. It's just a single cyclone cleaner, this. You can wash that under running water or hot soapy water. Again, make sure it is 100% dry before popping it back. Just turn it until it fits flush. On goes the filter. And then just close the top again. And then back onto the machine. The exhaust filter is located here on the cleaning head. There's a little slide control, so you just open it and remove it. Again, you can rinse that under running water and again, make sure it's dry before putting it back. Just locate it on the top there and slide the little control to the lock position and you're ready to go. For your above floor cleaning, there's an onboard stretchable hose, which you simply remove from the machine when you want to use it. So now you've got the suction directed through the hose for doing your upholstery and your stairs, etc. Although it is a stretchable hose, it's not a stair cleaning hose. And later on in the video, we'll be seeing just how far this machine will reach up a standard flight of stairs. I suspect probably less than halfway looking at it. The only tool you get is this rather dire two-in-one multi-tool. It's a crevice tool like this, and it's supposed to be a dusting tool like that, but the brushes are pretty rigid. If these brushes were soft, you could have used it on your computer keyboard or your electronics or for just dusting your shelves, but it would take quite a long time because it's a very narrow little nozzle. But it's not very good at all. Because it's quite a stiff brush, it would be okay for doing around the edges of your rooms because it gives you a little bit of agitation. And I suppose in the car where you need a smaller area, you know, you've got a tighter space to clean, then I suppose it will give you a little bit of agitation on your car rugs and mats, etc., and on your car seats. So that little tool does store on the machine, just down the bottom there. When you finish with the hose, you just put it around the top. Make sure it goes in securely into this part here, otherwise you won't get any suction at the cleaning head. Well, that's all, really, I can show you about the machine itself. I can't get over the fact how absolutely light it is very very light so if lightness is one of your criterias for a vacuum cleaner this certainly scores on that point but how does it score on cleaning well the first test of course is a load of pet hair so let's get on with cleaning that up right in front of me we have a lot of dog hair harvested from a golden retriever don't worry it didn't hurt a bit so anyway i've taken the hair and spread it over this man-made fibre rug. Now I've used a green rug because if I was to spread the hair over my regular carpets you wouldn't be able to see it because my carpets are cream and the hair is cream but because we've got a green rug there's a definite contrast so we should be able to judge better how well this goblin performs. So I'm just going to pass it backwards and forwards through the middle of this dog hair and uh, we'll evaluate the cleaning results. So there's a foot switch on the bottom. <laughs> Mm. 
Now that is pretty, pretty impressive. Wow. This is the first time I've used this machine properly. So I'm seeing this for the first time. Now obviously, here is what I call my line of shame, which you'll find the vast majority of vacuum cleaners that need a belt, which are most upright cleaners, even powerhead vacuums and turbo brushes have a belt. It's left an uncleaned part because underneath, I'm going to show you, just here, that's where it's not picked up the dog hair because it's not brushing. But one thing that's pretty good, despite all that hair, often with vacuum cleaners, the hair gets wrapped around the brush roll. But there is a little bit of hair there, I won't lie to you, but it's, it's not by any means, it's hardly anything as you can see. So the brush has stayed pretty clean, so that's, that is impressive, I'm quite surprised by that. And we can see already in the bin, that is where the dog hair is, in the bin and not on the carpet. And I'm glad it's, it's like that because I will be needing to reuse this dog hair for other demonstrations. So I'm going to clean the rest of this hair up with the goblin and then we're going to test it on a variety of other dirt on my carpets. But I'm pretty impressed with that and it's very easy to push and not, not as noisy as I was expecting it to be. I must say though the foot operated on off switch is a little bit awkward in its location. I didn't show you that in my introduction. There we go, it's just here at the bottom. Let's clean the rest of this mess up. very quick and easy, very very easy to push, very easy. And all that dog hair that was spread, wow, it's now in the bin. Look at that, that's chock-a-block full of dog hair. So I think it's certainly for me an A rating for cleaning up pet hairs, so for such a budget cleaner that's done very well indeed. For my next test I've put down some general dust and dirt harvested from several other vacuum cleaner demos. So it's basically, there's a lot of carpet fibers and fluff. There's a lot of heavy dust. There's other particles as well in here, all sorts of mess that I've used on various other demonstration videos. So let's see how well the goblin picks this up. I've emptied the bin because I've needed to use the hairs again. So let's pass the goblin through the middle of this and see how clean it leaves it. Well, for such a cheap vacuum cleaner, that is pretty good. It's not, again, it's not perfect because it's left, naturally it's left a slightly uncleaned line here where we have the belt guard. But I did notice, and you won't have seen, I doubt it, from the angle of the shot, but you could tell it was vibrating the carpet fibres ahead of the nozzle. Vacuum cleaners that have brushes, in the old days we had the famous slogan, it beats as it sweeps as it cleans. In fact, that's what iBasiac, my channel name, stands for. But uh, most vacuum cleaners nowadays don't have beta bars on them, but they do have brushes. Now these stiff brushes do create quite a good agitation. I'll do another shot slightly closer up of the front of the cleaning head and you'll be able to see the smaller particles actually bouncing up and down in front of the cleaner prior to being sucked up. So that, you know, to me, for such a cheap vacuum, to have such good agitation is definitely a thumbs up because the more it can vibrate the carpet, the more deep down dirt 
it can help raise to the surface. So it certainly does better than a lot of suction cleaners that just rely on suction. And upright, of course, relies on suction and a brushing action. OK, I'm just going to clean this other part now, but I'll give you a different shot from the front. And we'll just focus on the agitation of this goblin upright. So if you keep your eyes on the dirt just in front of the cleaner, hopefully we'll be able to see it bouncing up and down. sure how well you could see that but um, if you couldn't see that take my word for it it does actually agitate the fibers very well okay I've got a little bit more dirt to clean up so I'll finish the job and then it's off into the kitchen to see how well this cleaner picks up on hard floors Just before I go into my kitchen to test the machine on my kitchen floor, I'll just show you the bin. Just give it a shake. It's not quite up to the maximum fill line. That's the max fill line, so there's still capacity. I'm going to leave all this dirt inside the machine and uh, just to see if it has no loss of suction. It doesn't claim that, I don't think. And obviously when I've finished all the demos, we're going to have to look at how dirty the filter is. That will give us a, a rough indication of how well the cyclone works. I don't expect it to work as well as a Dyson. Of course, it's a fraction of the price of a Dyson or even a cheaper multi-cyclonic vacuum. But so far, you know, I didn't notice a terrible drop in suction, obviously. It picked everything up. OK, then. Into the kitchen now and we'll test it on a variety of dirt that I'm going to spread on my kitchen floor. Right, I'm in my kitchen now and I've fitted the hard floor adapter to the bottom of the machine as recommended in the instruction book and I've sprinkled down some flour, some sugar and some rolled oats so we've got three different sized particles for the goblin to cope with the flour obviously being the finest particle and the rolled oats being the largest OK, as I did with the other demos, I'm going to pass the machine forward and back through the middle just to see how well it cleans. And it's already, I, I don't like the sound of this, but I can already hear scraping noises from the sugar on the floor. So I wouldn't recommend you doing this test if you've got a very delicate floor that's easily scratched. That's why I'm doing the test for you. All right, it's going to be a bit noisier, I expect, in a kitchen. <laughs> I was not expecting that. It's not perfect, as you can see. It's left some of the flour. If I go over that a couple more times, it probably will pick it up. Now, the fact is, 
because I put the adapter on, it didn't scatter a lot of the dirt. If I was to use this machine without the adapter, I expect a lot of the larger particles especially will just be pushed behind the clean head. In fact, we might as well try it. I'm not too precious about this floor, it's due for replacement soon. So, if I cause any damage, it won't, it won't really matter. Let's just take the nozzle off if I can, it's a little bit tricky. <laughs> I don't want to break anything, it does, it does feel quite fragile to be honest. Okay, let's see how it does without the hard floor adapter. Now obviously the brush will now be in contact with the floor. Wow, another surprise! <laughs> now, there was a little bit of scattering but for some reason, instead of scattering behind the machine, like a lot of cleaners, it, it, teen, it seemed to scatter some of the dirt to the side. But it picked most of it up. I'm surprised. But I, as I say, unless your floor is very hard wearing, it's probably best to fit this adapter. Well, so far, I've been very impressed. This machine only cost me £35 from Asda.com when it was on rollback. You'll have to check Asda for the current price because it might go back up. But for £35, it's an absolute bargain. Absolute bargain. As you can see, we're pretty full. I'm going to check on the filter in a minute. But before I do, obviously this is not a scientific test. I'm just using my experience to judge the suction to feel how much suction is coming through the hose. Well, to be honest, from when it was empty I don't really detect any noticeable drop in the suction, considering it's not up to the full line yet, but it is pretty full. That is very impressive. Well, I'm at the bottom of my stairs to see just how far the stretch hose will reach on this Goblin Upright. It doesn't claim to clean stairs, it doesn't have a stair cleaning hose, so it's not going to reach anywhere near the 13 steps of a standard UK flight of stairs. But we'll see how far it reaches. So I'll just take the hose off. Unfortunately, that is the only nozzle, as I said earlier, so it's going to take quite a while to do your stairs with that. Certainly it's okay for doing the sides, you know, in the corners of the stairs. And with this little brush attachment down, you could do the bits. Some people have these wooden parts here, either side of the stairs. You could do the tops of that, dust the tops of that with it. But anyway, the machine's safely at the bottom. Now for an extra safety feature, what you could do is attach the hard floor adapter. That way you've no chance of getting your hands caught underneath or any inquisitive fingers. Um, it's harder for them to, to get them underneath to cause them any damage. Okay, with the machine at the bottom, I'm just going to count how many stairs I can reach. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six stairs you could clean. Obviously the machine is so very, very light you can carry it with one hand very easily and direct the hose with your other hand. Now, you could also use this machine as an upright, I would have thought, on stairs. I would just test that theory. Even in the old days, the old Hoover Junior that some of you may recognize, in the instruction for that, it does show you how to clean stairs with it in the upright mode by grasping it at the lower part of the handle. So, with this machine, I think... You could. You could at a push. Now, if you hold it here, and hold the handle with your other hand, it is possible to actually clean the stairs like this. And this will give your stairs a really deep clean, 
because if they're only used to a little handheld vacuum or a cylinder vacuum, you'll find that this will really bring the pile up and get some deep down dirt from your stair carpet. So it is possible, because this is such a lightweight machine, you can actually clean your stairs with it in the upright mode. Okay, so um, we've done all the demonstrations that I'm going to do in this video. And obviously, the bin is very full. But before I empty the bin, I just want to see how clean the filter is on the top. So, let's pop it, pop it down on the floor. Right. Hmm. I'm not surprised, really. That was once a black filter. It's mainly the flower, I think, that's caused that. So that's the first part of the filter. Now, this side isn't too bad. That's still relatively clean. But there is, it, some of the fine dust has actually passed through. It's hard to tell on camera, but you might just be able to see there is a deposit of dust on the filter. The top part of the filter, where the air expels, is still pretty clean. If you want to see the ratings that uh, the EU rating sticker gives this for filtration, I'll put the details below. Because obviously they have ratings nowadays, vacuum cleaners, for carpet cleaning performance, hard floor cleaning performance, emissions, which is the filtration, and of course the energy use. This is an A rating for energy. I can't recall, I think it got quite a low mark actually for dust emissions. So I would say that's the one downside of this cleaner. If you're very sensitive to dust, you might want to look for a more expensive model with a better filtration. This will all clean. What I'm going to do, I won't wash this for this um, time. I'll just get another vacuum because I have another one to hand and just clean it with a suction cleaner. Same with that. I might give the bin a bit of a rinse out. So basically the tests I've done today would simulate two or three weeks, maybe more, of an average home. Obviously I've picked up a lot of dirt in one go. But as you use a machine, even if you're using it on a relatively clean carpet, obviously in time dust and hairs possibly will adhere to this filter. So keep the filter clean, keep the airflow constant through the machine and I can't see why this won't last you a couple of years as long as you take care of it. And obviously there's a lot of dust and debris inside there. So this will all need a bit of a clean out before I use it again. But all in all, it is a thumbs up for this Goblin Upright. Well, that's just about the end of my review and demonstration of this Goblin Bagless Upright Vacuum Cleaner. How many marks out of five shall I give it? Well, very few vacuum cleaners gain a five out of five but this is going to get a 4.5. Considering how much it costs, if this machine was 120 pounds, 200 pounds, then obviously it wouldn't get a high rating, but I'm basing it on how much it costs, the value for money, it's outstanding value for money. If you can buy this for 35 pounds, if it's on offer at 35 pounds, you need a vacuum cleaner, you haven't got much money, get it. Now obviously I don't know how long it's going to last long term. It'll have at least a one year guarantee. It might have a two year guarantee. I'll have to double check that. But even if it lasts you a year and it's cost you £35, that's still pretty good value. Obviously I would prefer you spend several hundred pounds to get a decent vacuum that's going to last you years and years. But I understand that not everyone can afford that sort of money on a vacuum cleaner. So for those people who just want something cheap, this is certainly one I would look at. It surprised me on all levels. Most surprising was the hard floor cleaning performance. I've not seen a budget upright cleaner do so well on hard floors as this Goblin. Obviously you have to attach the hard floor adapter to give it the best performance. It's not, it's not too much trouble to do that. It's brilliant. Now, the only one thing I will say to you, this will need a belt. It's a belt driven, There's a mo there'll be a spindle on the other end of the motor that drives the belt. Now in time, drive belts will wear, they will snap. Now if that happens, you won't have any brushing action and you're not going to get very good performance. So I will check 
if I can obtain belts for this, because if you can't, then I wouldn't be quite so keen on recommending it, but I'm sure you'll be able to get belts. Once I found that information out, if you can get a spare belt, I'll actually show you in another video how to fit a new belt. So if you've got one of these goblin cleaners and you've had it a while, it's not picking up very well, obviously check for blockages first, but if you detect that the brush isn't spinning at all or not spinning as it used to, it could be either a stretched or a broken belt, which you'll need to replace. So I'll be looking into that for a future video. So if you want to see that, please subscribe and you'll be updated when I upload any new videos. And if you want to check on my back catalogue, there are hundreds and hundreds of different videos, many different vacuum cleaners, all price points, as well as some demonstrations of carpet washers and hard floor cleaners too. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful and helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.